this video I'm going to show you how to access WordPress data so that you can put it on a regular website. Now you might want to do this if you have websites that are constantly changing. What you can do is you can just put it in a WordPress post and have that post appear on your website. It's quite easy to do and you can just go in, update the WordPress post and your site's updated instantly. I'll show you what I mean by that. First of all, we need to install an instance of WordPress. So we'll just go through Fantastical and we'll set up the database and WordPress blog here. Click on WordPress, new install. Now this has to be on the domain name that you're going to use. It can't be on a different domain name. Okay, so we're going to put this in a uh, working directory. You can put it anywhere you want because you're only going to use this blog to update sites. Okay, and we put in our admin access here. This is just for you to sign in. Okay, we don't care about the rest of this stuff. We'll install WordPress, finish the installation, and now we'll go to the admin page okay so here's where our data is going to come from we'll go to admin and password go to posts okay and I'm just going to give you a for instance here say you had a release schedule that you're going to put on your website that shows you what ebooks you're going to release in a certain month. So, what we will do is we'll add a new post. We'll call it release schedule. And then you put your release schedule and the content down here. Okay, so this is our example post. We're going to publish this. Now let's go to settings. There's one more thing we should do. Make sure that our blog is not going to show up in the search engines because we're just using this to make sure that we can use the posts on other sites. Okay, it's already set to block search engines but allow normal visitors. That's fine. Okay, now what we want to do next is we need to go to our C panel. So let's go back here. Go back to our control panel. Then let's go to the file manager. We need to track down the config file for this WordPress blog to get the username and password out of it. Okay, so we'll go to the file manager and we're going to go to the web root and we installed this in a directory called working so we're going to go and find that. Roll down until you find working. Go inside and what we're looking for is wp-config.php. Here it is here. What we want to do is we want to go and edit this. We're not actually going to change anything. We're just going to look at it. So just click on the editor. And we don't have to worry about the encoding check because we're not going to change anything. We just want some information out of here. Okay, so what we have in here is the database name. So grab that. Okay, and you can see DB name. That means database name. So copy that. Now open a notepad session because you need this information later and you should probably save it somewhere. And then you want the username. Okay, here's the database user. It happens to be the same here. And then the password. These are not the same as what you set up. This is the password to access the database. So here's the password. So grab that out of there. paste it in here. 
Okay, you now have what you need to be able to access the database. So let's, what I would do now is I would save this so that I have it ready for use anytime I need it when I want to quote one of my posts in a website. So let's save this, save it as DB info. All right, now the next thing we need to do is just insert some code into the web page we're going to create. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether it's on a blog or anything else, you can access this data. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to create a quick web page here. Okay, so we'll just see. PLR product of the month. Then I'll just save this as a page. So release schedule will say, click OK. okay and then we'll save this. And that's it. OK, now we need to rename this file. Right now it is named release schedule.html. That's how the file was saved. OK, so I just open it with Notepad. And I'm just going to do a save as. And then I'm going to change it to a PHP. You could also just right click on it on your desktop or wherever you saved it and rename it to a PHP type file. Okay, so now it is release schedule.php. This is what we're working with. The next thing you need to do is add some code in here. Now, I've given you the code. All you have to do is take the code out of the file that was included with this video, copy it. And then what we'll do is we'll paste it in here. Now there's only a couple things we need to do. First, we need to put the database and the username and the database password in this spot. Okay, so here's the database username. Well, database name and database username are the same in this case. So we can kill two birds with one stone here. First, let's change the username. So, paste this in here. Then we need to change the database name here. Paste that in there. Then we need to change the password. Grab that, and then you put that in where it wants the password here. It says DB password. Paste it in there. And the last thing is we need the name of the post. So it says, it says where post title is, and right here where it says the post title. You need to change that to the title that you put in your blog here. So it was just release schedule in capitals, I believe. Yes. So you need to type that exact same thing in here. So release schedule. Just like that. Okay, we'll save this. And all we have to do is upload this to the server and it will populate our site with that database information. So let's upload that. Let's open up FileZilla. And we need to connect to the same server that our blog is on, but we don't have to put it in the same folder. Okay, so we could put this, for instance, in the root folder if we wanted. Okay, so I'm just going to put it right in the web documents. I'm going to upload release schedule.php. We'll upload that, 
and that will bring it up on our browser. So in this case, it's going to be the best info on dot info slash release dash schedule dot php. Okay, now there it is. Now you'll notice that it didn't put any line breaks or page breaks in there. It did bring the data in. So if you wanted to do that, what you need to do is go back and edit your post. Let's just do an edit here. Go into HTML mode. And what we'll do is we'll just put some line breaks in here. Like so. Update. Let's refresh this now. And there you go. So you need to make sure you just put the line breaks in there, like I showed you, and everything will work fine. So that's how you can use a WordPress database to populate a regular web page.